Okay, um, today is a special day for me, and it's a special day for all of you here. I will invite you for something, and God bless you for coming. God bless you for listening. So today is a very special day for me in my life. So today I'm going to I'm going to ask my wife. No, no, I'm not my wife. I'm going to ask. <laughs> I'm going to ask my baby if she will marry me. Okay, so please, my wife to be away together. Okay, so where are they? So now. And I want to ask you this million dollar question. This billion dollar question. Will you agree to marry me? Um, um, after the class, let's have this conversation again. <laughs> okay, she said after the class. Okay, so after the class and what is the class today the class today is before you say i do are we together yes, so i hope we all you're all welcome thank you for joining again so i will keep my ring <laughs> till what after the class so let me hear if she will say i do and if she doesn't say i do you know what happened to all of us that are watching okay so let me keep my ring yeah thank you everyone for joining us today like um pastor k said the title of today's class is before you say I do and we're basically coming from the angle of wise questions that you should ask before you decide to say I do okay father we say thank you, thank you Lord. in everything father we invite you father we invite you into this gathering invite you into today's meeting have your way let everything bring glory to you and let your children receive knowledge wisdom and understanding in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. in Jesus name we pray Okay, so today we're going to start quickly with the Word of God, and the Word of God we're going to be reading. We'll be reading from Genesis 2, verse 25. I will allow my, I will allow my wife. No, no. I will allow her. <laughs> I'm your wife. Yeah, I will allow her. To, you know, she said she's going to do it, yeah? So let me allow her to read. And after we know where we are. Okay. Can you permit me to read from verse 23, sir? All right, that's fine. Okay, so... The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. And they become one flesh. Now, this is where we're going, verse 25. Adam and his wife were both naked and felt no shame. Another translation says, they were both naked and not ashamed. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so um, that's the topic to, for today. Um, before you say I do, and um, and the scripture you've heard now is they were both words, naked. So before you say I do, there are certain questions, there are certain things you need to ask that the person needs to tell you the truth. Is in the truth you begin to know if you want to say yes or if you want to say flee, okay? So, okay, so that's what we'll be looking at today. And please, if you have your questions, be ready with your questions, and God bless you. So we're looking at the wise question, okay, that you need to ask before you say what I, I do. do. So number one, as, as, as it might sound, I will ask you, or who, I, I will ask you, you should ask me, because I'm proposing, I need to know. So are you married? <laughs> yes, I'll have to ask, I'll be sure. Yes. I'm married to you. <laughs> no, no, this, no, no, no. Okay, for the purpose of this. Yes, the purpose of this class. I know you are married to me, mm. but this Recording class, in progress. The ring is in my pocket now, you yes, know. Sir. So for the purpose of this class, okay, yeah. No. Okay, you're not married. For the purpose of this class, she's saying no. Okay, so you ask me to, is it? Are you married? No, I'm not married. So basically, this is the number one question you ask. Before you say, yes, I do to this person, try and find out. And you have to even pray, equally pray to know that this person is telling the truth, that they are not married. Because I can tell you categorically, there, there, there are men that they are married, they will leave their state, and they will travel out to another state, mm -hmm. and they will see another lady, and they will not propose. I have, I have a clear example of someone that came to me. She's a, you know, she, she, she's a member, and, and, and she said to me, 
and she said that, you know, this guy will work together, and in time we're working together, I really love this guy, we became friends, and from friends, and all that. The guy now proposed, and she said what? Yes. But she didn't take time to go find out a big background check about this guy. Mm -hmm. And apparently this guy, is well, he was married, and even had two or three kids. Mm -hmm. So the guy scammed her, okay, but... After a while, they la the, the marriage didn't last anyway. They had to, it was, they divorced anyway. So, so it's very important that you ask this question. Do not take it for granted. Don't just assume. Mm -hmm. Ask this question and tell the person, look, the word of God says they were both naked and not ashamed. So remember that the foundation of your marriage, of everything you want to do, is going to be based on the word of God, okay? So now, the question you have to ask, make sure tell the person to tell me the truth. Even if you are married, some people might be married and probably going through the divorce, yes. or they're about, you know, their spouse are no more there, their spouse has gone to be with the Lord, or something. So you need to, you need to be able to find out and ask genuinely, and you have to be open and honest enough to tell the person the truth. That's why we started by saying they were both naked and not ashamed. Marriage is something that requires you to be naked and not ashamed. Because when you hide anything, guess what? It will come in the future to haunt both of you. And then you, it was like you are deceptive. Then it becomes, how do I trust you? Mm. If you knew you had this thing, if you knew you were married before, and you now didn't tell me, how will I trust you that you are not going to do the same thing to me? How will I trust you that you will not go out tomorrow and have another person and disguise to be another person and get married to that person also? How will I trust you? But if we follow the word of God, remember, marriage is not my idea, it's not my wife's idea or her idea. <laughs> okay, so marriage is God's idea. So both parties must be willing to do it God's way. So it's a genuine question. Are you, have you been married before? Mm. Do we understand? Yes, and you get a genuine answer for that. Baby, do you have anything to say? You said it all. But the thing is, married, like, just like you said, somebody who was already married, okay, and did not tell. That's that's very heartbreaking. I can't even begin to imagine how she felt when she found out that he had been deceiving her for so long. People don't recover from those things just like that. So if you love, okay, you should be able to be honest with your partner, no matter what it is. Now, of course, a married person has no business going to ask someone else to marry them. But there's, the, there's a lot of craziness in this world. That's why we need to do our own due diligence. And I'm sorry, but it's usually from the male side. I did say it's from you, my king. It's usually from the male side. They, they are married, you know, to some, to they have a wife somewhere, or they, they even if they're maybe going through a process of divorce, they keep it to themselves. They don't tell you what's going on. And then in the, in, by the time you get married or something, all of a sudden, this thing begins to pop up from nowhere. Oh, I have a wife here. And you're wondering how? How don't you tell me something as important as this? So please, my ladies, my sisters, especially for you, make sure you do your due diligence. Find out. Do a background check. Whatever you need to do, please do. Because asking the question on its own is not even enough. You have to do extra work. I just needed to throw that in there. All right. Um, thank you. Because um, um, for the um, for the male, um, please, I want to beg you. I mean... Remember, the person you are dealing with is God's daughter. Mm -hmm. She's not just a lady you just met. No, she is the daughter of the Most High God. And the Bible says that God is watching you how you treat them. So yes. please be determined. Don't allow them. It's painful. You might not understand the level of pain. So that's what I'm coming to tell you. Please, please, I'm begging of you. I beg of you. Please do not do this to anybody. Do never. That's wickedness. That's satanic agenda. Please don't do it to any woman. Okay, before, even if you are married, tell them the truth. Let them know that probably if you walked away from this, it's not working, or you guys are in divorce, or you guys are in court. Let them know the true position. Don't push them along, deceive them, take their emotion, take their heart, take their joy, do everything, and after a while she discovers that you are married. It's going to break her. It's going to, you know, there's certain things that... It only takes God to, you know, and you don't want that. You don't want God, their father, to, to see how you're treating, you know, you know, his daughter. Please don't do that, okay? So, so another question I need you to ask Oxo is, um, wait, what's the second one, baby? Do you have children? 
Okay, uh, I don't. I mean, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying before marriage, okay? Mm -hmm. So I say no, I don't have. But if I had, I would have told you that, okay, um, okay, it happened when I was in school. As at that time, I really didn't understand what I was doing. You know, I was, I was carried along because of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. So I met this person, and somehow we began talking, and one thing led to another, and that thing led to another. So, you know, so we have like one or two kids and all that, okay? So you see, but we don't have anything. It was just that thing, and the person is in this place. I'm in this place, so there is nothing, and the kids is where they are, or we're taking care of them, and all that, and all that, and all that. But we were not eventually, we, I didn't get married to her, so there is no certificate, there is nothing that's saying that we are married. So it was a mistake, and um, yeah, I'm paying the price of that mistake. How I wish I knew better. How I wish I understood things better. How I wish I understood you know, what the word of God told me to do. I will have kept myself because the Bible says should, I should flee. But I didn't hear a word. I was, I was moved by what my peers were doing. So I decided to follow them. And something, I, I didn't see, they didn't have the case I had. I was innocent, but the woman I just did once and that was what happened. So you see, so it was a mistake. It's not something I'm like, say I'm proud of because I know it's against the word of God, but that is where it is now. And There's nothing I can do about it, so yeah. Yeah, in the case where it's also, it wasn't a mistake. For example, people were married. Okay. person was married, and the person now has kids from that marriage, and but the marriage didn't work out. And they're either a single mother or a single father. It's important that when you are also looking for someone else to spend the rest of your life with, you come clean. There shouldn't be any surprises. The guy should not come one day and just maybe, for example, maybe after you divorced or something, you now, if you had a child, a boy, a girl, whatever, and they're now with your parents or something, and you just don't want to, because of the trauma of the marriage, you don't want to be associated. You just keep them there. And then you don't say anything. Maybe you're in another town, then all of a sudden, from nowhere, many years down the line, you know, a child pops up. And it's, I, I, like I said, I'm coming from the point of, somebody who did not know something and then all of a sudden it just pops up from nowhere so just imagine that if you don't want someone to do that to you please don't do it to someone else it's important to be naked and not ashamed so on this side please ask the question do you have any children and if the answer is no still do your due diligence and i don't know how let the lord lead you but make sure that that answer and be ready to live with the answer. Some people don't have a problem with it. I personally would not. Okay, as long as I know that this person loves me and we're going to be doing life together, you know, according to the will and the plan of God, why not? Your children become my children. But some people, for them, it might be a deal breaker. So it's very important that you find out and also the person in question is honest about it and then we move forward from there. All right, so um, so that's please, please, please take your ask. You know, there's nothing wrong. Bible says we should ask. So ask questions. Try to know a bit much more, okay? And I believe that um, God will help you. You will, you will know the right questions to ask, and and especially the questions we are telling you now. So please do ask if they have any children at all, whether it's outside marriage, in marriage, or after divorce. So in any of these categories, please ask. And remember. Both of them were naked and not what and not ashamed. So that is what marriage is. They were both naked and not ashamed. Then number three, any ask, any ex around the corner. I'm, I mean, yeah, so I will we'll be asking. She will ask me, I'll ask her because this one, yeah, everybody will be asking this question. Mm. Is there any ask hiding somewhere? Mm. Uh, no. No, okay. No okay, there is no ex anywhere. So when you ask me to, I will say, oh, there is no ex anywhere so i saw something on i saw something on um on instagram where i was going through instagram so i saw this this guy he was getting married to this lady okay so on their wedding day on their wedding day so um apparently she's a white lady the guy is a that guy so all right on their wedding day so they said they should make their vow and all that so she said he said 
that he wants to, you know, use the screen to show his own vow and all that. So I don't know if you saw it, yeah? You saw it, right? So he said he's going to use the screen to, you know, do proposal, say his vow. So, and guess what? All the guests, they were there. The, 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 all the bridegrooms, everybody, the invited guests, everybody, they were all there. And when he put the, the, the screen, he played it. And when he began to play, they now saw the wife-to-be with one with a guy, I mean the place, the wife to be the place they came, probably the hotel. Yes, the hotel where she was lodging lodging for the wedding. A guy came there and you know, that was what they saw because I don't know he was monitoring her and all that. So that's it because I think he's suspecting her. So that was what happened. And that I'm sure that would be the end of the marriage. So I'm not coming here to judge and ask, did he do the right thing or didn't he do the right thing? Why didn't he call her and tell her and probably call off the wedding and all that? You see, when people are hot, when people are hot, they, they some, that if you don't have the love of God, they'll look for how to get back to the other person. Okay? So, so that was what happened. He wanted to get back at her because she he felt that I've been faithful to you. I've never, you know, I was open before you. I was naked and not ashamed. This is me just saying, okay? And he just felt that he couldn't handle this kind of level of pain. He said, okay, so what will I do? Let us see how he hurts to cheat. And he played it and everybody, and it was, you, you can imagine. So I, we don't want this kind of thing for anybody. Both the male and the female, you don't deserve to go through this kind of pain. Never. God did not make marriage for both of you to go through this kind of a pain. If this one's cheating here. Now, no, that's not our God's angel because there is a pain. You know, if if you've ever had that kind of a pain, it's a, it's a very painful pain that no man can really describe to you. So all I'm saying, do not allow anybody. Don't be an a vessel. Don't be an instrument that will make somebody else go through that kind of... It's a wicked pain. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. So always make sure that there is no X around the corner because yeah. this is one of the major, major faults that the enemy uses to, you know, break marriages and break home. You want to say something? Yes, I wanted to say something because this is a... It's a like you said, it's a major um, force that the enemy uses because once you have had, especially when there have been sexual relations with an ex we put it to you that you have no business even being friends with that person when you want to. Because just like he said, when two people come together and, you know, they've done whatever they've done and all of that, there is a soul tie like we have explained here before. And it doesn't matter how far away the person is or whatever. There's something that happens when you guys begin, con like, begin to talk again. There's signals that are sent. So it's not, you need to ask the other person in question, is there any ex around the corner? Is there somebody that is still in your life? The person is an ex, but the person is still in your life. You know, you guys are still friends. People will talk. That's a major red flag. Because you know, in fact, statistics show, okay, that majority, I don't have the exact figures now, but a lot of marriages go down as a result of exes. So it's very, very important that you find out from your spouse to be before you say I do. Is there anybody in your life that you've had something to do with that is still close? Somebody you still talk to, somebody you still share stuff with. Is there because we've heard all sorts of crazy things. Okay, so it's important that you ask. And if there's somebody like that, if the person is not willing to let go of that closeness or that friendship, please. We will advise you to run for your dear life. Thank yeah, you. yeah, yeah. You have to run because I can remember. Um, uh, I can remember. You know, when we were married. Okay, you all know we've been married anyway. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll say ask the question because the ring is still in my pocket <laughs> anyway. So I remember one girl. She just called me up and um, she said she wanted to see me. And I said I asked her why do you want to see me. She said, uh, I said, w I, I mean, I don't care. So, you know, then I was, I was working in church office then. I said, you know what, come to church. You see? She said, no, she doesn't see me in church. I laughed. I told my wife that, you know what, that there is this person that calls. Because I, 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 don't, I didn't save her number. She got my number from somebody and now called me. Then you know what I said to her? I said to her, I called her name. I said, do you know you are married? I said, is your husband aware that you are calling me? 
Do you know it's evil? Do you know it's wrong? I said, no, no, no. Go tell your husband that you're calling me and see here what he has to tell you. I told her, focus. Stay in your home. I told her, don't call this number again. Do you understand? So you must understand that that's what Satan has come. His agenda is to steal, to kill, kill and to destroy. And he said, you don't want to come to church. You want me to. Why you want, you want me to come? You won't come to my house. Why do you want, you want to? No. We are not. We don't. We are. So when you, and you, you see, I told her because we are naked and not what? Ashamed. Do you understand? Yes, sir. And, and that was it. And she never called me again because I warned her. I said, don't ever call this number again. In short, let me lead you to Christ. I now prayed for her. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so um, quickly we continue. Um, number four. We've done three. Then number four, baby. Okay, so I'm asking you. Okay. What are your life values? What are your beliefs? Okay, these are two questions, but okay. they're two in one. Okay. okay. So, as a Christian, what are your life values and what do you believe? Because I personally believe that two Christians can actually have different values. Okay. Yeah, so what are your values? What are your life's values? What do you believe as a Christian? Are you asking me? I'm that's asking question you now. Should ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So basically, um, <laughs> okay. Now my value. You, I mean, you you knew my value before. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's just see. Okay. So basically, you have to find out what's it. So for my value is, you know, I love God with everything in my heart, hundred percent. Yes, sir. I don't joke with it. That's what I my love God. <laughs> I love God totally. I want to please him. I don't want to hurt him. I, I just love him with everything, with my heart, with my soul, with my being, with my mind, with my action. I love God. Yes. Then I love people. Okay, I don't want to see people hurt. I don't want to see the enemy win. I'm always angry mm. when I see it looks as if the enemy is winning God's children. Mm. Because of how much I love God, I don't want the enemy to, because this life is a kingdom, the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. When I see something and it looks like I see the kingdom of darkness having an upper hand, I'm always angry in my spirit. Mm. Why? Because of I love God. So because of I love God, I love God people. Do you understand? And I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe there is a life after here. The Bible says that uh, at the end of our time here, um, if you do well, you will hear the crown, you hear the sound saying, well done that good and faithful servant. So my heart beat is there. I want to receive that crown. I want to receive after my exploit, great exploit here on earth, mm -hmm. I want God to say to me, not just to me, even to my wife, to my children, to everyone that I'm close to, to everyone that I see anywhere. I want to hear God say to each and every one of us, well done, that mm -hmm. good and faithful servant. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. So I needed you to say that to everybody. Okay. <laughs> but honestly, that, that's one of the reasons, you can, okay, the major reason why I married him because I understood that we believed the same things and we were heading in the same direction. So, this question is very, very important. Very, very important. Yes, it's very important because mm -hmm. I was, I was, was it just yesterday I was speaking to someone that, you know, he has been married for about 13 years. He's a pharmacist and, you know, he was literally crying and um, I felt, I felt what he was going through mm -hmm. and he, and he, and he said to me that how I wish that certain things I would have found out. Like, you see this question? He said, when we met, we didn't, you know, I just thought she was a Christian and that was it. Oh, that yeah. I didn't ask in more detail what do you believe because I was just leaving the university then. She was still in, in college and we just felt, oh, we're starting good. Let's just go. So he didn't go down to ask in details. He didn't understand what was this person believe. And mm -hmm. 13 years down the line, is now regretting that he didn't do that because they are in the verge of filing their divorce. Mm -hmm. So you see, and he said that is a major question that that he know that he missed it there. You know, he was telling me the area he missed in his life. Okay, so he said, I knew I missed that point. The moment I missed it, it, it didn't haunt me. And and look at it now, it has haunted me forever. So you have to be. What we are saying is life. 
We are not just coming here. No, no, no. This thing is real life. Real life. I even spoke to someone. I think she was, I think she resides in Iowa. And, 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 and you know, she's equally having issues. And, and she said, oh, I've moved from my house. I said, didn't you ask this? They said, well, I just, you know. So there is ignorance. A lot of people don't ask this question. And now, some years down the line, the thing now surfaces again. And you discover you're not paying the price for something you didn't ask for in the beginning. Yeah, um, because and that's because a lot of us make assumptions. We just assume because, oh, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian. This, uh, because now we're at the level of Christian now, not even unbeliever. You have no business. <laughs> As a Christian, you have no business trying to ask a non-believer what are their life values and beliefs. The Bible has already said it, stated it clearly that we should not have any, we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So, now we're talking Christian to Christian. There are different things that we believe as Christians. Even in Christendom, there are some Christians for whom the word of God is not the final say. Mm. What yeah. For them, the final say is the culture. culture yeah, absolutely. For them, final say is what their parents say. Mm. So you need to understand that before you go, before you say I do. So for example, and these things are things that if you find out before time, it will help you make wise decisions. Because if you know that, oh, when, it, when God says we should do something and the person I want to marry does not believe that, oh, okay, God says you should, uh, uh, me, I'm not yet convinced, that kind of thing. You, both of you have to be speaking the same language. You have to believe the same things. It is very, very important. If not, it's going to be, I remember, you know, when me, my husband and I were dating and all of that, and certain things came up, like tithing and all of that, we had to come to the same page that, okay, oh, when it comes, we're going to get there. Let me not jump the gun. But we need to believe the same things so that we can work together. Because the Bible says, can two work together except they are agree, in agreement. Okay? So please, 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 make sure to ask these questions. No, and it, it, it might not be something that you just sit down one day and begin to ask. As you people walk, as you people go, you know, get to know each other. Sometimes some of these questions you don't even need to ask. You just see how the person is displaying, acting in this area, I know that, okay, this one, for example, this one is very, 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 very key. A lot of Christians right now believe that it is okay to have sex before marriage, even though the Bible says that having sex outside of marriage is a sin. They have come up with all sorts of reasons why it's okay. You need to ask that question. Okay, if you are keeping yourself, you need to ask that question before you say I do because it will it will show whether the person on their own part have been living celibate and holy lives. When you you be, you know, so there are just some questions that you need to ask. Very, very important. What do they believe? What are their lives values? Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. So that's very powerful. You know, sex is very powerful. So always ask that thing and let the person know your stand from day one that you're not interested in this, you're not doing this until afterwards marriage. Yes, and sir. you will know if the person will stay or if the person will disappear. Do we understand? So the next one is... Um, okay, this question. Hmm. Mm. I like this question. Okay. <laughs> yes, so who are you accountable to? That is a question that every man, every woman needs to ask the person that they want to get married to before, or the person they want to go into a relationship with, before you agree, you know, to be married. Why? Uh, because you know that when two people come together, okay, you've not done this thing before, okay? Even if you've done it before and you are out of the marriage, you made certain mistakes, it's important that you are both accountable to somebody. Someone said once that a headless man, when I say headless man, a man that is not accountable to someone is a walking disaster. Because when something goes wrong, you, if something, God forbid, but if something happens between my husband and I, now, I have somebody that I can report him to. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, that this is what's happening. No. Please come and talk to him oh, and all of that. So besides God, there should be someone, and it should not be your parents, it should not be your siblings because those ones already take your side. Okay? But for accountability, it's very key. And vice versa. If I'm doing something wrong, my husband has people 
or someone that he can tell, report me to, there should be accountability in your marriage. Just in case. Because the enemy is looking for a foothold. He's looking for a foothold. He's looking for a way. The enemy hates marriage. The Bible says that God hates divorce. Guess what? Satan loves divorce. So he will do everything he can to scatter your marriage. That's why it is important. For some people now, okay, they like to go, you know, see a, a therapist, go for counseling. That is good. But there should be accountability. Especially with people who have gone before you, who are doing it successfully by the grace and the mercies of God. It is good not to take your spouse outside and be telling everybody what's going on. Or take, you, do you understand what I mean? But there should be people that you can talk to, that have your interests at heart and are looking out for you and can help you fix it when you are going in the wrong direction. So you need to ask that question. Who are you accountable to? Well, that's, that's, that's amazing. That's powerful. So let me share quickly what, um, you know, what happened of recent, okay? So in church, um, this, um, this lady, you know, they've been coming to church and everything and all. So she just calls me up and she said, she now told me X, Y, Z. And, and I said, okay, is that because I think the, the, the husband reports everything that happens to the parents, okay? The husband is always telling the parents everything, everything, and everything. And because of that, she, she, she's, not, she's not comfortable, she's not happy. So the more the, 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 the parents call her, the more upset she becomes mm -hmm. and all that. So because of that, she's not happy. And she called me and tells me that, look at what my husband is doing. He's telling the parents everything that is happening in, my, in our home. And I feel bad. I feel I feel betrayed by him. I, I just I just don't like it, and because of that, I'm finding it difficult to respect him. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what I did was okay. I said that's fine. Okay, I called him up because I know I, I know him is is like he's, I know him in church and all that. So I called him and I said to him, you see, I am not the one. I I I don't have authority over your home to start with. Your home is your territory. You are the king and the Lord in your home. But this is how I want to tell you. I want to advise you that you see, your wife is not just comfortable with certain things. Go and discuss with her and get back to me. That was how I care. I didn't say anything. I said, it's your responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Spirit, yeah. So I'm not gonna. He said, I said that she didn't tell me anything. That was nothing. She didn't. But you go get the details and get back to me. So what he did, they had a discussion and everything. And after he got back to me, and he said, Oh, my wife is not, you know, respecting me. That that. And and now in the, in the process of discussion, he now mentioned, Oh, I report my wife to my parents. Okay, I, to my mom, I tell my mom, well, my, I, I, that's when I, I told him to hold on. Why would you report your wife to your mom? Mm. Bible said, um, too, I mean, you shall leave your mother and your father, and both of you shall cleave together. So why take your wife to your mom? Is that, you understand? So I now began to school him, and I actually told him, I, I have like three friends or thereabout that did the same thing, and I can tell you today, their marriage has been broken. So parents kind of somehow will support their children. And Satan is looking for an avenue to break your marriage. So he's looking for somebody he can use, influence them, and make them support you or make them support the other party yeah. so that this marriage will start having issue. And when, you're having, when he's having issue, they say, oh, he looks a way to make them, you know, you know, it's an influence. Not that they're bad people, but Satan hates marriage. So he's going to use anything and everything to come against that marriage. I told him, look, you are ahead of your home. Satan is already coming straight for your home. And if you are not careful... After a while, this thing is going to degenerate and both of you will start, you know, there will be no interest, there will be no love. No, you know, they start living in one separate room, one separate room. From there, Satan will now introduce one guy, one where, one girl, one where. And all of a sudden, they say, oh, we are no more compatible. I'm so it's a systematic ploy of the enemy. So you have to keep your home. After I said that to him, he went, honestly, you know, he went and they had a... Same this talk, you see, they are both naked and not ashamed. So they sat down and they said, oh, he said now, he said I hate, I hate that atmosphere. But now, thank God, that atmosphere is no more there. 
Do you understand? Why? Because there was accountability. Imagine if there was nobody she could talk to or nobody here to would listen. You know, she knew she, she knows that the husband will listen to me, okay? And that's why she said, okay, I'm going to tell you because I know my husband will listen to you. And now they are both happy. And that's the joy of the home. And that's our intention. So accountability is key. So you find out from the person, who will you listen to? Who are you like, you know, you kids say, oh, I don't talk to anybody. I don't take instruction from no one. I am the head. I take no instruction from nobody. It's me. And ah, uh, be careful. Because those kind of people, when anything happens, nobody will tell him to do anything. He will do it the way he wants to do it. Do you understand? So you have to have accountability. Okay? Awesome. All right. So um, number six now is... Um, Okay, let me ask now. Number six is, what are your mindsets or what are your beliefs when it comes to finances and when it comes to money? Are you asking me now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm just... <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. okay, so okay, so when it comes to... Okay, yeah, what are your beliefs? Like, what do you believe in? Do you believe in tithe? Do you believe in giving? Do you believe in helping people? Do you believe in, I can help my family? Mm -hmm. Do you have a problem with me helping my family? Of course not. Okay, you see, you have to ask because yeah. so women don't like it at all. Mm. They, 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 they are angered if they see that you want to do something for your family. It, I, I mean, I, I mean, someone was telling me, I, man, I, I was like, why? I mean, you don't need to know. You, you don't, you don't, I don't even go that way. I said, why would she be this wicked? Now, you want me to do something for your family and help your family. But when it comes to my family, you are just so vehement. You just, there's this viciousness. Why are you this angry? I'm not angry if you do something for your parents, you do something for your siblings. I'm even encouraging you to do something for them. So why is it that when I want to, you know, you know help my, you are very upset, why? So you have to find out, do you have any issue with me helping my parents? Do you have any issue with you, me helping people? And then people can just come. Do you have a problem with that? No, sir. So we do it together. With, yes, absolutely. <laughs> we do it together. So, so this is the things you should know, that both of you are together. You are a team. Do we understand? Yes, so sir. it's important to see how this person is. Am I stingy? Of course not. You, you see, you have to know. Manager. You have to... <laughs> <laughs> you have to know some men are stingy and some women are stingy. They'll make their money, they'll wrap it, put it somewhere. <laughs> Your money is our money. Mm. Her money is her money. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah, so it, it's it's this you see this money issue, we can be on it because it is well. You need to find out what that person's relationship is with money. Yeah. Because there, there's money relation need to understand what that person's relationship is with money. Because some people find it difficult to pass with money, just like he said. Some women especially feel like it is the man's sole responsibility to care for the home, as in financially. And her own is just to look pretty and support, you know, once in a blue moon. You need to find out all those things. Are you, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. If that's what works in your marriage, that's beautiful. But know that you need to find it out first and know if it works for you. You need to find out if both of you can run a joint account and spend money together. Plan with your finances together. Remember, they were naked and not ashamed. You also need to find out if the person is in any debt. Okay? Because if the, other, if the person is in a debt, are you ready to inherit that person's debt? It's something you need to ask. Find out, are you owing money? Okay, if you're owing, how much are you owing? You need to know before two of you tie the knot so that, because as you are going in, it, you have become one. So that person's debt has become your debt. Same thing financially. Yes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that, everything, you know, two has become one. So yeah. every liability, so every asset, everything is, yes. Yes. So, it's so one. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, you need to understand the person's mindset. Does the person believe that, oh, your money is your money? My money is my money. I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. Too, but that's not the word of God. The word of God says two of you shall become one. So you are one in everything. So if that, you need to find out if that's the person's mindset. And if you have a different mindset. And are you ready to live with it? So when it comes to money, how does this person spend money? You need to find that out. How, what do, you, do you feel like, oh, let's spend money now. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Or do you believe in saving 
Or there are people that believe that, oh, as we're making money like this, let's just be keeping it. Let's not spend this. You have plenty of money in the bank, but you don't see it on your body. You need to find out all these things. It's very important. And make up your mind before you go in that I will either live with this or this is a deal breaker for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's important because there's a couple in church here. Both of them, you know, part of their goal for this year is to buy I think, four how many houses? <laughs> yeah, four, 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 four houses. houses. Okay. So both of them are partnering to buy. I think they've gotten two or so. Mm. So you can see money is not a problem for them, which means they understand what money is for. Money is good, but it's... It, is, is a servant to mm. your goal. Yes, money is a servant for your vision. Money is a servant for your plan. So money in itself is not everything. So because when you focus on money, oh, it's my money, then you will not go far. So both of you should come up with a great goal. Yes. This is what we want to achieve. Yes. I want my wife, I want her album to be everywhere in the world. So together we'll plan, we'll make it happen. I want everything to be there. I want the books I'm writing to affect the whole world. Mm. So together we we'll plan and make things what happen yes, why your money is your servant don't let money be your master in your house mm -hmm. because homes where money become their master that's always where there is a problem because money has a spirit of its own oh, okay sorry. mammon is the spirit of mammon mm -hmm. so if you allow the spirit of money to be a master in your home you guys are going to have issue so it's something you need to deal with. Money should be both of you servant. You send money on an errand. Mm. You send money on an errand in investment, mm. it brings back to you. Yes. You send money on an errand, it does things to you, and both of you are happy. You use it to help people, solve people, they increase your better life, move on. Is an, a money is a servant. Let money be servant to you and not a master. Yes. When money is a master, is where they have problem. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm. You guys have some stories of either this person is a nurse and she started making more money mm. than the husband, all of a sudden sudden, everything changed, he bosses the man around, tells him to sit down, slaps him back and forth, and one day, the man wakes up and said, you know what, he took a gun, real life story, yes, he took a gun, shot her, called 911, and said, as the 911 they are coming, I will shoot myself, and as, as he was shooting her, he said, okay, go and spend this money, now you have it, I brought you nothing, now you have money, go and let me see spend this money, you know, money became, a, you see, money has that evil power, mm -hmm. And eventually, he shot the wife. Before the ambulance and 911 came to him, he shot, shot himself. himself. So they saw both of them dead. Why? Because of what? Money. Which means money became a master in the house. Instead of a servant, mm. he became a master. And that master has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. Satan is, you know, he's the god of this world. So he still has that power over money through somewhere. So if you don't allow money to be a servant and you not make money to be a master, guess what? It's only a matter of time. It's going to steal, kill, and destroy. destroy. Even so, some people that they have, you know, they have great talent. They have, you know, they are doing very well. But money is a master to them. Where are some of them today? Because of the money they had, they were doing, doing all manner of evil, doing anyhow they want. Some of them are in jail. Some of them are in prison today. I don't want to call any but If you go and check, you will see a lot of them. Some of them are dead. Some of them are in jail. Why? Because money became a master. And when money becomes master in your soul, Satan is already in there. And it's going to begin to control you. You begin to do the things you're not supposed to do. You have fleets of women everywhere because you have money. Satan is now your master. After a while, <laughs> He's going to steal, kill, and what? Destroy. So be careful, okay? So we have um, the last one, right? So uh, coming to the... There's, there's, I, what, what I was thinking before yes. this happened, you know, while we're talking, what, um, one of the questions that popped in my head yes. when we're talking about, do you have any children? Yes. I think it's also important to ask, how many children do you want to have? Okay. Because I have, I have I've heard of people who it has become an issue in their marriage. Oh, this one wants to have two. This one wants to have one. Or this one wants to have one. Okay. This one wants to have three. It has become an issue. So you need to ask. The other question is, how are we going to raise our children? Yes. Especially in this very blessed world that we're living in. Because we're praying for the city. We're praying for the world that, you know, people will come to Jesus. So I like to call it a blessed world that we're living in. How do we raise our children? Do we have a common goal that we are? When it comes to our children, how do we want to see our children grow? How do we want to see our children become? How do we discipline our children? It's very important because let me even use my home, for example. My dad, you know, he believed in 
you know, spanking. And my mom did not believe in spanking. It used to cause issues. Okay? When I say spanking, I mean there are different kinds of, you know, so you need to, find, need to discuss those things before you say, I do. How are we going to raise our children? Do we have a common goal? Do we have a common, you know, way of saying this is how we train our children? And then, like I said, how many children are we going to have? Very important question. All right. So, yeah, it's important because kids, um, you know, remember that um, you, are, you don't own them. God, God sent them to you. Your responsibility is to train them. Okay, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they grow, they will not depart. So both of you must agree. See, everything is, it comes back to the word of God. The word of God is telling you train. Like the Bible said, I know my son Abraham. He will train, you know, my son, my child in the way of the Lord. So, so there is a place for training these children. So both of you must agree that okay, this is how we want to do it. This is the way we we'll do it together. We we'll, we'll take them the word of God. We'll make sure they grow. We'll be there for them as much as we can from the beginning. We'll declare them. We'll make them understand their identity. Let it be your responsibility to make your children know who they are. Because when they go out, out there, mm. the world will want to want change to their them. identity. Yes. So make it upon yourself. Both of you must agree that our children, they must know their identity from home. Mm. Which means both of you must know your own identity. And the moment you know your identity, you pass it on to your children. And tell your children to pass it on to their children, children, children. They must know their identity before the world gives them another identity. You are in the social media age. Social media will give them quick identity. They will, be, they will miss it. But if both of you have resolved that our children will must we must, by the help of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, teach them, train them the way of the Lord for them to retain and know their identity in Christ. And not just identity in Christ, they will have spirit of excellence. They will excel. Let them know that when they go to school, they will stand out. They are the head because that's who they are. That is their identity. They do not be, they, don't, they, are not, they shouldn't be intimidated where people are. No, they should stand tall and stand firm and stand strong because of who they are in Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Amen. So <laughs> let's say one more. And if there's any question, if you have any question, please can you send in your questions so that we can, you know, help and let someone be blessed, you know, by the question you're going to ask. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you want to take the last one before? Yes, uh, but we can do it together because okay, yes. this, uh, something else was coming to my mind. It was, okay. um, so you, you need to ask this person, what are your goals? What are your plans? You know, do you have any long-term plans, okay? Um, do you have short-term plans, short-term goals, and all of that? These are questions. Why are you asking these questions? Because you need to know if both of you are going to be able to do purpose together. Are you going in the same direction? Are you going in the same direction? Especially when you're a purposeful person and maybe you've written your own goals, you know? Or even in your career, you need to find out how far is this person willing to go career-wise? Because all these things will affect, so that tomorrow now, if, let's say, the, the girl has made up her mind that, oh, I'm going to do, when I finish uh, college, I'm going to go into my, I'm going to do my master's. After my master's, I want to do a PhD or do three PhDs. Are you willing to leave it? Are you, I, because when, the, when she's moving on like that in her career or in her academics, it's going to take a toll. So are you ready? These are questions you need to ask, okay? How far would you want to go in your career? What are your goals when it comes to your job, your career, uh, or it, for example, even ministry? I've, 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 I've had friends that were very fireful, you know, for God. They are music ministers carrying fire and brimstone. But once they got married, all of that ended because their spouse did not support their ministry life. So, these are questions. You need to be sure that both of you are going in the same direction before you say, I do. Yeah, that's, um, that's you know, I, she said it all. I mean, 
um, for the future, both of you need to understand. It must be clear. It must be something both of you sit down and, and discuss and talk about, okay? This is what dating, I mean, this is what you should be doing when you're dating, which means you're getting to know each other. You're getting to know what what is the future. Does he have any future plan? What's the goal? If we don't, there are people that, there are some guys that can give you the bogus goals and you ask, have you achieved anyone? Mm. And they give you bogus reasons why they've not achieved anyone. Guess what? Let me tell you. That same person is not going anywhere. If you get married to that person, you will keep having bogus plans, bogus reasons for not achieving even one. So if someone say, I have a plan to be this, and, and I've made a step one, and you see the step one, okay. So which means he's, he's, like, he's, he's saying it and he's doing it. Okay, don't mind someone that is just saying and is not doing Okay, he's saying and he's not doing. Just like there was a case of a lady, and she and and she's going out with this guy, and um, and apparently says to this guy that um, that uh, that were, you know, they are planning getting married, and the guy said, "Oh, I want to marry her. Mm -hmm. That is my intention." And the guy and the girl says to the guy, "Look, I, I don't have a problem. I want to marry you also, real life." And she said, "But I need to see." that you're making progress in your life. Yes. I need to see that you're moving forward in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you left where you were living to live with your friends so that you can save money, all right? He said, yes. Show me, have you saved anything? The guy said, no, he has mm -hmm. not saved anything. So now, she's doing well for herself. So how then do you want me to now get married to you that you can't even take care of yourself when you're not even paying rent? So what do you want me to do? Now you have to go. Now I, 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 apparently the Greek girl really liked her too, liked him anyway. But she but wanted to be sure that I don't want to get married to you tomorrow. Mm. And he discovers that you are not doing anything. The same you becomes the same you. Because the same person is just going to magnify himself in marriage. It's not going to really change that much. So if it's someone that does not have drive, that does not go out there to make something happen, guess what? When you marry him and you are bringing the money, there's no need <laughs> for him to... Oh God, nothing else. Uh, after all, the rent is being paid, this is being taken care of, and you're bringing in money. So what do you want me to do? I can stay, you know. So you don't want that kind of a person. Do you understand? So you want someone that even in the little thing he or she is doing, you can see the effort that the person is making to mm -hmm. do something. So don't mind someone that don't have any effort. All he has is just that fine face, <laughs> and that's his. No, no, and that's his pack. No, be careful. It is not his pack. Oh. Nothing is dead pack. Because a lot of people have fallen astray because of where, where they're looking for six pack. And she, and, she, and she made a wise decision. And she actually told the guy that, no, I'm not going to go ahead with this. Because I don't think you are ready for this marriage. Because I don't want to be the one doing everything. And you can't even do nothing. That has broken homes. Yeah, I many know homes. Lot, yeah, I know somebody very close to her. She's the go-getter. She's very driven, very ambitious, always out there. And then the husband would just be at home reading Bible. And saying God will do it. After a while, she just she couldn't. The marriage ended. I'm not saying that should be grounds for, you know, a marriage to end, but it can be frustrating. And that was what happened to her. Their home scattered. The enemy just used it as a loophole. Came in, and the marriage was scattered. So it's important to ask all these questions so that you don't get any surprises in marriage. It's very important. You see, you say, oh, no, if he's a man of God, okay, what are, what are your plans? Mm. What is God saying to you? Have you started doing it? Mm. Have you done it before? Mm. How far have you done it? If there is no evidence where whatsoever to show you that this person has been making effort and really God is really telling the person to do this, to yeah. do this, and you can see then you, you, he's just going to play and get married to you, then he'll just sit and say, God is still telling me. Do you understand? So you have to be careful. All we're saying is, as my wife said, is not, is not, and we're not saying she, and we're not supporting divorce, okay? We are telling you what to stop. We are trying to stop it from yes, happening. Yes. So that's why we are telling you. A stop, a, yes, a broken, yes. Is better than a broken Absolutely, marriage. absolutely. A broken engagement, a broken relationship is better than a broken home. That, that lady I told you, she was able to say no. She said, I don't want this. I don't think I can cope. You see, you should know for yourself. Tell yourself the truth. Mm. You know what you can cope with and what you cannot cope with. She said, I don't think I can cope with this kind of a person. And that's how she called and said, he told the guy that she's no more interested. 
with your fine thing. And no, no I'm, I don't want, I don't think I can cope with you. Because what happens, probably they get married and he's at home. Every time she sees him, she's she, she, yes, she's now bittered. I will leave in the morning, come back, do business, do this. Mm. All you do is just sit at home, looking very fresh, looking very good, chatting your phone. You said, I'm trying. I'm, nah. She says, I can't cope with this, okay? Yes. So, so I hope you have learned something. Yeah. Um, if you have any question, please, you want to you want to send it and we can look at it and for those of you that are in you know on zoom you can you can quickly send us questions and um so yeah so it's important please before you say i do because i i i we feel we will not happy when we see homes are broken because satan has an agenda satan has a plan he's to steal kill and destroy when he breaks you he just goes for the children then a pattern has been established then he begins to you know and God understand that for the society to be seen, the family needs to be seen. So family was the first thing God even created. Mm -hmm. So if Satan is against family. He fights family with anything and everything. So be careful. Amen. God will, God will keep helping us. So yes. we have uh, a few questions okay. on Zoom. And um, if you are on YouTube and you would like to ask questions, Please feel free to drop them as a chat. We will answer them by the grace of God in our next, um, you know, because this is actually before you say I do part one. Okay? We're just, this one was, we're coming from the questions that should ask the other things that you should do before you say I do. So, yes, thank you. Now, one of the questions we have here is um, what if the person is insistent? on the sex of the child they want. Is that a deal breaker? As no one has the power to determine boy or girl. You want to answer that? Oh, no, babe. <laughs> you want <answer> to <laughs> Okay, so now, if the person say, you must have a male child, I say without, so you now begin to understand, so if I don't have a male child, does it mean this marriage is over? You ask him. He will tell you, yes. I will go somewhere, I'm going to get a male child. Because in some culture, they are so fixated with the gender, okay? So if it's from that, so you see that he has culture mindset. That person is already telling you that he has a culture mindset. That if you don't have a male child, then this marriage is not going to last. So you know that you are now on that. If you say, okay, God will do it and you enter. And the first one is a female child. The second one is a female child. The third one is a female child. The fourth one is a female child. Then you should be, uh, you should be ready <laughs> for anything you will see. And you will hear that he has gone out. So he has already told you. So now you don't come and cry. But he said in the beginning that I want a male child. I'm very particular. I want a male or I want a female. Okay. And you do the first one male, second one male, third one male, fourth one male. You, you should understand that that person, Satan, this is what happens. Satan will find a legal ground. Be, you know, Satan hates marriage. So he will begin to whisper to him that you, that is you, I need you to have a male or a female child, depending on the gender. I'll say, look at that, your secretary. Don't you think that that person will give a, a, a female child or a male child and see how much she likes you? See how much she's, uh, she respects you? It's nothing. It's just, you know, so Satan will begin to tempt. So, so the tempter is always available. So there is a legal ground to tempt. Sex and um, the, 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 the sexual um, gender of the child becomes a legal ground. So he will use it to tempt the person. Go out. Go out. Get a meal. Get a meal. Get a meal. Get a meal. The voice will be so loud, and somehow he will position somebody there for him. And all of a sudden, you see him going out, and guess what? Probably he'll not get the milk child. So, oh, and one day the wife will get to know and say, I don't want it. You know, so he has, he has broken the covenant. So, Satan has a legal ground in his home. And that will lead to another thing. And that thing leads to another thing. And that thing leads to another thing. And, you know, so you don't want to go into all those things. So, it's better you ask him. See, let me ask you straightforward. We want male, but if God doesn't give us male and we have female, what will happen? Mm. Or we want female. If God gives us male, what will happen? Hear what he has to say. Let him be, remember the scripture, they were both naked and not what? Ashamed. So if he said, no, I, I'm going to insist. Okay, now you ask him, can we adopt? Mm. If we have female and we really need male and I really need male, so will you be willing to adopt? Because every, every child is from God anyway. Yes. 
Do you understand? We don't own any of them. So can I adopt? Is it good for us to adopt? If he said, no, I don't adoption. So what do you want? Let him tell you what he wants before you say what I do. Yeah, and you can also educate him on the fact that for those that say they want male kids, okay, and they are blaming the woman, I just, I want to believe that in this near age, the people know that it is the man that carries the Y chromosome that comes together with the X chromosome in the woman to bring forth a boy. So anybody that is blaming a woman in this day and age for not giving them a son needs to get more information. Okay, so if once, personally, if, I, if a guy tells me that, that's a major deal breaker. I won't even go forward with that. So you make up your mind. Okay, that if something happens and it's all girls you have for the guy, and he says, leave my house. You knew from the beginning. So that's why it's important that you deal with it before you go into marriage. I you know she's a doctor, so she's telling you, so the man that is listening, know that it's your fault, not her fault, okay? <laughs> All right, let's go. It's not really anybody's fault. Yeah, it's not anybody's fault. <laughs> okay. it's, you know, you can't, you, that's God. I mean, yeah. and, and children, remember, children are a gift from God. Yes, sir. Anyone God's gift to you, honor them, pray, just train them. Guess what? You will not be here forever with them. My mom and my dad, they are not here. They have gone. So one day you will leave them. They don't, you don't own them. You only care, take them for a time. Yes. Sir. All right. Okay. So we have another question here. Uh, who asked that question? Thank you for the, that question. God bless you. Yeah. I was Sophia. Oh, Sophia. <laughs> okay. So, yes. Another question here says, is there such a thing as right person, wrong time? She says, I've heard it a lot, but could it actually be a factor? When you say right person, wrong time. I mean, in that, in the, maybe you, 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 uh, you won't say. I'm, I'm to try to. Okay. I, I think I understand. Okay. For example, I'm just using this as an example. Somebody who wants to further her studies. Okay. Um, and she's not ready for a relationship or to get married at that time. And somebody comes around and wants to. And the person is, you know, wanting to take it deeper. Like, let's get married. And this, there's nothing wrong with this person. The person has checked all the boxes. The person is good all around. But on her own end, because of these goals that she has, she feels that it is a wrong time. That's, that's, that's okay, what so, I okay, think that's I understand. Scenario. Okay. Yes. okay, she has painted a scenario. So, so let's look at that scenario. Okay, like, I'm ready to say, let's go. And she's like, no, because of her goals, you see, we discussed it that I want to do masters first before I get, you know, get into anything marriage. So if you don't mind, if you can be there, when I finish my masters, then, you know, you know, we'll still be friends. But remember, there is no sex and no nothing. And if you're here, you won't tell me you're here and you're there. So you want to be here, let's be here. And, and let's wait and be patient and, you know, and we can do it because God makes everything beautiful. So my timing is, um, let's say by the end today, let's say this April, like by, by May or, or September next year, I'll be really ready. But for me, I want it in April or I want it next month. Then you see, she's a good person. She has everything I want. But the timing now is the issue. Her timing is next timing year. Timing is not rhyming. Uh, so timing is not rhyming. So my own time is not rhyming with her time. Mm -hmm. So now the question is, who will budge? Will I say, okay, all right, I will honor your time. Okay, I'll respect your time because of your goal, and I'll be still be there, we'll be there, we'll be there, and together I'll make sure you finish, and then after you finish, the day you drop your pen, we already printed an invitation card, so as she's dropping her That's pen, what we're all... Did. Eh? As we're dropping pen, they're <laughs> marrying me. <laughs> okay, all right, so now's the time, so I was patient, okay, so... <laughs> I should drop a pen. We're getting married, so so that's it, okay. So, but if not, I say okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't think we've I've not asked you. So there are other there's some other person I was actually considering. So I'll just and that one is she's ready to get married in the next two months. So you know, so I'm sorry. You tell the person I'm sorry that we can be best friends, but we can't be best friends anyway. There is no friendship. Okay, it has ended. Okay, our friendship has ended. I've seen Grace. someone down to marry. So, Grace. okay, you take care, papa. <laughs> then you go your way and get married to the person that is uh, ready with that time and leave this person alone. 
Don't after one year, you now, oh, wow. And you now say, oh, so why did I, I, will, I wish I waited. No, you must know what you want. I wait together. And the moment you make your decision, don't go back and begin to say, if I had known, I'll have waited for that a year and six months for her instead of staying with this person. No, don't ever do that. The moment you make that choice, be sure that that's it. That's the choice you're going to live with for the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Oh, yes. We have two more questions. All right. After this, we'll be fine. Thank you. God bless oh, you. Okay. One more came in. Can we take it? Let's do Stop, stop, stop. All right. Quickly. Okay. What, what, what about a man that doesn't work, doesn't have papers here, but is insisting on marrying you, that you, the lady, can make papers for him? What do you advise? Okay. Okay, for me, I mean, you have to know if this person is genuine. We've ticked other things. You have to know that this person truly loves you and um and the person from his background is not a lazy person mm. and he's he is someone that is willing to do something. You will know if he's a lazy person. And if he's not a lazy and he truly loves you, then you guys should be accountable. You see, accountability comes in. So take this person to your pastor and let your pastor, let your pastor, you know, he's a, your, your, your pastor will probably examine him. Your pastor will probably check him to know. You know, a pastor can pray and begin to see. After you talk to a guy, you'll know what a guy, who, what kind of a person he is. You know, spirits, after a while, you know, because of your, your openness, the spirit of God begins to reveal certain things. Okay. So that time, because of that accountability, you begin to see certain things. You begin to know certain things. And you have to equally ask God eventually yes. that God, please let me know if he's for real, if he's forever. Let me know. And God will reveal to you because God is interested in his business. Every businessman wants their business to be profitable. Mm -hmm. God wants marriage to be profitable because he is the founder and owner of marriage, which means the more people stay together, have children, are they full of joy, love, goodness, happiness, all those things. That means that the God business is being profitable. But the moment that people are divorced here and there, which means the business is not how God planned it, and it's not God's fault, it's the people's fault. So all you need to do is say, Father, please help me, guide me. If there is anything hidden, you know, that way fire can reveal. Like yeah. the snake that was hidden. Fire revealed the snake. So you say, Lord, if there is any hidden intent in his heart, let the Holy Ghost fire reveal. Somewhere along the line, you see him begin to make certain mistakes, utter certain things, say That's certain what... things. You say, oh, <laughs> this is what he wants. I yeah. see. Yes. Now, like, like for instance, that, that girl I was telling you about, this person wanted to, you know, said so, uh, but he, the guy now came back and said, you know what, I can go out and go and get married and I'll still come back to you and we do our traditional wedding. Who will ever say that? Let me say it's well. He said he would go and marry somebody <laughs> okay. for paper. Okay. And the reason why he said that was because she was not willing, because she said, I want to see this, I want to see this, I want to see that before we get married, okay? Then he's like, okay, no problem. Why are you waiting to see it? Let me go and marry somebody for paper. Then me and you will now do traditional. It does not even make any sense. So that was God's way of exposing him for who he was. How do you go and marry? Me, I can give you paper. I'm just asking you to prove that you have, you, you, you are able to work. Yes. You are able to provide for the family. Yes. Just, and I'm even making, going out of my way, you know, open certain things for you to do. Yes. And she has suggested certain business yes. that you can do that can help you make some mm -hmm. money. He and said, no, I can't do it. comes up with different excuses why he cannot. Yes. Okay. While you were talking about, just, just answer this person's question as well. Um, one of the prayers I prayed, there was somebody that came into my life before I met my husband. And everything, he seemed to check all the boxes. Everything seemed beautiful. But then the pastor of my school fellowship at the time, when I told her about him, she was like, oh, good, good, good. She said, just pray this prayer. You know that the Bible tells us before Jacob became Israel, he had a weakness of being a deceiver. He used to deceive. So she said to me, go to God and say, Lord, if this guy has any Jacob side, let it be revealed. And I went to God with that simple prayer. It was not up to a month. The guy started showing himself. And I just knew that he was not the one. So you can go to God in prayer, just like Pastor K was saying, and God will reveal to you that this person his paper is looking for, not for you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay. Um, oh, wow. Two more. I'm going to ask the two of them at once, so we can just quickly. When do you ask and reveal health questions? While dating or engaged, 
how to know the truth is being told as that information is not easy to check out. So that's the question. Especially mental or family health patterns. So when do you ask and reveal these health questions? Secondly, what about a man who says it is hard for him to stay without sex outside marriage and he's struggling and this is not very easy for him that he may be vulnerable and sleep outside? How do you handle such men? Okay, I want to answer this one. Maybe I'll leave the question for you. <laughs> um, the word of God <laughs> makes it very clear. Okay. So if a man is putting pressure on you that you should sleep with him because it's hard for him to stay without sex, you ask him, okay, marry me now. If, because the Bible says that people should get married so that they don't burn, right? So if you are ready, sure. let's do this. It doesn't take too much. If you, are, if you you are sure that you are ready to marry him, then let him to marry you. If he's pressurizing you for sex and he's not ready to pressurize you to get married, please run for your life. That's all me I can say. Run for your life. Thank yes, you, I mean, I'm absolutely. And because if he can't do without sex, mm -hmm. guess what? When he gets married to you, he will need another one. He'll say, yes. well, I'm tired of Fanta. I need, yes, I need to drink Coke. Mm -hmm. I need to drink Pepsi. Mm -hmm. I need to eat another soup. Mm -hmm. I can't be eating one soup. So that same spirit yes. will throw him away. Yes, so you see, that's self-control. That's fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit is self-control. So if he doesn't have the fruit of the spirit, he's having this fruit of the kingdom of darkness. Mm. And if he has the fruit of the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness will still use him to achieve other goals, which means he will be very difficult to be faithful to you. Yes, sir. He will not. I can tell you for sure. If he has a problem when he's self-control when it comes to sex, mm -hmm. when you get married, that same problem will come again. Because as a time, the woman, as you are married and she's in her, in her, you know, her period and all that, that requires him to be to, to stay and wait. He will say, No, I can't wait. We are on no, he will go out because he can he doesn't have self-control. So self-control is a fruit of the spirit. Okay, so as long as he can have self-control, then what happens is when he get married to you, that self-control will equally keep him or keep her from going outside. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But if you say, oh, I, don't, I can't hold myself, ah, it will be worse off mm -hmm. in marriage. Yes, so know that, and I can tell you for free, it will be worse off in what? In marriage. Because he doesn't have the spirit of self-control. He has the spirit of looseness. And that looseness is from the pit of darkness. And they will continue to use him to achieve more of those things. So please be wise. Are we together? Thank you, sir. So the other question that has to do with health. Okay, health is a very sensitive thing. Um, this is what I'll say. I'll use myself as a classical example, okay? Um, all right. Okay, when I was in school, back in school days then, I met this I met this lady, okay? She's not as pretty as my wife. <laughs> I met this lady, okay? And you know you know how it is when you meet someone and, and I, really, I really liked her. And um, actually in my heart, I was going to marry her because I don't date for, mm, I date because I want to marry this person. So in my heart, I really, really loved her. And one day she comes and she tells me, you know, um, that she has a problem. I said, what's the problem? She said when she was, she gave me one story, Sha. You know, they gave me this, this story, very believable, that they removed her womb. <laughs> I thought of it, thought of it, thought of it. And then my elder brother, he's a pastor. So I went to my elder brother, you know, I told my elder brother that, see, 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 I really love this girl, but this is what this girl is saying to me, that they removed. And my elder brother, who is a pastor then, said, well, if you really love her, okay, now, it doesn't stop you from getting married to her. That, that God, there's nothing God cannot do. He told me as years, this was years, more than 20 something years back. Mm -hmm. So he said, there's nothing God cannot do, number one. And even if it's too hard and you really love this person, you can always adopt. That was my brother telling me years back. So I made up my mind that I was going to be with her. Do you understand? So eventually what happened was, I think somebody came from the US and went to the parents and said they wanted to get married to her. She ran away and you know, ran away from the home because of me and eventually, I wasn't ready as at that time. You see, right, who is a good, good person, right person, right person wrong timing. But that guy from America was ready. He had the American dollar. And I was just in school. I was just about graduating, you know, so grabbing my final year. So I wasn't ready. But she, so her friends told her that, look, if you want someone that really loves you, this guy loves you. Do you understand? But you have to make, but the other guy is ready. 
and your family, they, but because of the family pressure, she succumbed and eventually got married to the guy, and the guy took her from there and took her to America, and that was it. But I'm here with my lovely wife. Do you understand? So, so do you understand? So now she 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 told me, uh, but she, I don't know. She was playing. She was playing. She wanted to know if I would go or if I would stay. So when a guy loves you, he will want to see how he can be there for you and believe he can be there for you and both of you can overcome this. But it's not the first thing you tell the first person on your yes, first date. It's not. Let you have to know that this person really cares and really loves. So you can see. If you know the kind of person he is, does he care about people? Does he really love God and care about people? So if you care about people too, it won't be, it won't be, a, it won't be, it won't be, you say, but this thing can happen to anybody. Mm. And you now begin to think and say, okay, how can I be of help? How can I be there to help her overcome this? And you understand and, and all that, do you understand? So there is where you can tell the person. But if you tell the person after marriage, ah, the person will, he will be angry. Yes. That why didn't you tell me? So the person has a legal right to say, I don't want to do anymore mm -hmm. because you hit this kind of heavy information from me. So, but before you guys tie the knot, before you say I do, sit the person down. Let the person say, do you know what? Now you know that this person really loves you, loves you for who you are. And if you love me for who I am, this is who I am. Do you yes. understand? Yes, so in addition to what Pastor K just said, um, there's really no, we can't give an exact timeline but just be sure, yes. you, you know that this person right now, when you understand that this person has proved beyond reasonable doubt that they are your person and they will be there for you by the grace of God, you can begin to divulge such information. Then according to that question as well, the question also talked about, especially when it comes to mental health issues oh, and yeah. certain patterns in the family. So for example, maybe in that person's family, they've had one or two people who are experiencing mental insanity, things like schizophrenia and the rest of them that can be genetic and all of that. It's important when, that you tell that person. Oh, well, as at that time, as at that time, mm. both of you will be accountable. Yes. So your pastor, you have told your pastor, mm -hmm. and your pastor must understand the power in deliverance. Yes. Your power must be able That's to break, break, break circles, break yes. patterns. So those things can, your, if, if you are under a pastor that understands the power and the force and the word of God, the deliverance power in, in God, he can deal with it. And, yes. and assure the guy that you don't worry. As long as we are here together, mm -hmm. nothing will happen. I will break it. Take, the, take both of them, break it, scatter it. Take them to the court of heaven where God is the righteous judge. Remove her from that bloodline and align her into the bloodline of Christ. Let her know from now, this is our bloodline. It is the bloodline of Christ. You know, terminate that one and bring her into her new. Do yes. you understand? So yes, you must have accountability. For that question, accountability must be there, which means the pastor must be one who understands and can help. Conduct. If he can't do it, he must know someone that can, you know, do this um, um, pattern breaking and delivering. If you don't, join an SPPD. It's rings of joy. We are fire here. Exactly. So we know. MSPPD. Hallelujah. Praise God. See, so, okay, that's so that's it. So let's finish. Let's finish the, you know, what we started, the way we end it. <laughs> we must end it here. We must end it. Let me bring out the ring. We must do what? We must end it. Are you going to let me ask you, will you continue to do we have been doing for how many years now? Will you continue to take me and to do? Are you doing that? I'm in that again, so <laughs> let's continue. Are you doing, are you doing, are you doing? Uh, for the rest of yes. my life. Thank you. <laughs> yes, hallelujah, hallelujah. So everything was it, and you said, yes, I do. Yes, and she I continued do. doing, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> and we'll continue doing together. And we'll pray for you all that God will bring, help you bring your own bone of your own bone, the flesh Amen. of your flesh in Amen. the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Marriage is a good thing for yes. all those that to go into it is a good thing. Good thing will follow you. Good thing will follow your home Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for everyone that has tuned in to listen. Father, bless them. Yes, Let Lord. them find their own power. Amen. Let them find their own spouse. Amen. Let it be bone to bone Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When they marry, divorce will not be mentioned in their home. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say thank you. Lord. We return all the glory Glory to you. Yes, In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What God cannot do. Does not exist. What God cannot do. Does not exist. So we look forward to seeing you at the same time yes. next month. 
Yeah, next month. It's always yeah. the first, the second Sunday yes. of the month by 7 p.m. And um, as we are led, we'll let you know before that time what we'll be doing. But thank you all so much for joining. We really appreciate you. Yes. We love you. God yes. bless you. God bless you.